minutes right now. Awesome. Thank you so much, Joanne. Tēnā tātou, e koanga ngāko, te kite atui a koutou. Oh, thank you all for coming back. This session follows on for the last one. It's a quick look under the hood at how National Library contributes New Zealand terms to authority files and catalogues around the world. So, what we will cover, we'll look at why we create name authority records, a bit about the Name Authority Cooperative Organisation Programme, what we actually do, and then onto subject authority records and the subject authority cooperative organisation programme. We'll look at creating subject proposals and a little bit about the future of authority work. Please do pop questions in the chat at any point and I'll do my best to answer these at the end. So looking at names to begin with, there are always new authors, artists, musicians, etc., creating new works. We need to identify and distinguish these in our catalogues. For example, we recently created an authority record for the Beths, who are a relatively new and very popular independent pop band from Auckland. We added a qualifier musical group to identify them as a corporate body rather than any other kind of entity. Sometimes we may have multiple creators who share the same name, and we need to distinguish these so that library users can identify works by the person or organisation that they're most interested in. For example, we have Michael Jackson, the New Zealand poet, who's quite different from Michael Jackson, the American musician. And we've added dates to the name headings to distinguish these two creators. Sometimes a single person may work under different names. They may use pseudonyms. Sometimes we may bring, wish to bring together all the works under different names together. How, however, at other times, a person may wish their works under different names to be kept separate. And we always follow the creator's preference. For example, the New Zealand stencil and aerosol artist Flocks has also illustrated a children's book as Hayley King. In this case, Fox was quite happy for works by the two names to be linked. Name changes can happen too. On the 17th of November 2015, Whanganui City officially changed from Whanganui without the H to Whanganui with the H, which meant that Whanganui City Council also changed its name to include the H. In this kind of situation, we need to link the former and later names, and if possible, record the date of change, so it's clear which form of name should be linked to a bibliographic record. So National Library creates and updates authority records for organisations, persons, conferences, families, places and series through the International Name Authority Cooperative Organisation Programme. We're always following the guidance in RDA and from Library of Congress's program for cooperative cataloging. The NACO program was established in 1977 as part of the program for cooperative cataloging, PCC. And there are right now 703 member libraries. However, there are only a few of us there in the Southern Hemisphere. Obviously, there's National Library. There's also a Monash University Library in Australia and Biblioteca del Convention Nacional de Chile, Chile. And these libraries all create name and series authority records. They're added to the Library of Congress name authority file, which currently has over 10 million records. And at National Library, National Library is responsible for name authority records with an Aotearoa Otokolo connection. And we aim to create 2,000 name records per year. We can do authority work on any name of a New Zealand person, family, corporate body or series that is associated with a creative work. We receive a large number of requests every year, mostly from National Library staff, but also some external requests. Obviously, we need to be selective. We prioritise those names where there's a conflict with a similar name, where someone has changed their name, 
And also when we've come across extra information in the resource catalog, which may otherwise be lost. We have a small team of catalogers who do a shift of authority work along with other cataloging tasks. In this example, we became aware of the date of death for the artist Bill Hammond, which we added to the authority record. As discussed, we create new authority records for names according to international standards such as RDA, and we add these directly to the Library of Congress name authority file. We try to identify variant forms of name and other attributes to identify and distinguish the creator in hand from other creators. We may well record relationships, e.g. linking the musician Chris Knox to the band World Wars. I think I'm showing my age here. So what do we do once we've collected this information? We create draft authority records in a program called OCLC Connection Client. For this record, for the journalist and broadcaster Mihi Tarangi Forbes, we've added attributes such as Iwi and Hapu affiliations, Ngati Paua and Ngati Maniapoto, occupation, and the languages fluent in. We've also added two variant names and a Wikidata identifier. In future, we anticipate that we'll focus more on identi adding identifiers that link to other descriptions, rather than recording a lot of information directly in the name authority record. Once we've completed an authority record, this goes through a peer review checking process. And then finally, it's added to the Library of Congress name authority file. And from here, it's shared further around the world to huge databases, such as OCLC's Virtual International Name Authority file. Here's the record for Mihinarangi Forbes in the Library of Congress Name Authority file. Privious, privacy is an important issue that we need to consider when we're recording personal details. We follow the Privacy Act 1993, and the information we record must be either publicly available or collected directly from the person, along with their permission and understanding. Details such as someone's date of birth, middle name or gender can be really sensitive. We only ever record gender if explicitly self-disclosed by the person. And in case of doubt, we don't record personal information. It can be quite challenging to determine the most appropriate form of name. Last year, we realized that we've had several different forms of name for Te Ariki Nui, Tatarangi Kahu, the late Māori Queen. So I talked to the then Māori research librarian in the Turnbull Library, Ariana Tikau. Together, we were able to contact the Kingitanga, and we were able to confirm the correct form of name and the authorized access point. Moving on to subject headings now. Why do we need to create new subject access points? As we talked about last week, place and subject names may become outdated, incorrect, or inappropriate. However, new terms are slowly being created all the time, and existing ones are changed to more appropriate terminology. Along with other libraries, National Library contributes to these changes. These subject authority records are created by SACO member libraries according to the guidelines in the Library of Congress subject headings manual. These include all topical subjects and also a lot of geographical places that are not jurisdictions, such as mountains, harbours, islands and so forth. For example, Pio Pio Tahi Milford Sound is treated as a subject. All proposals for new subject headings need to be individually approved by the Library of Congress. This can be a slow process that takes several months. Our proposals need to follow the guidelines in the Library of Congress subject headings manual and the SACO participants manual. Each proposal is a document that may be a couple of pages long with preferred, non-preferred, broader and narrower terms. 
there need to be a significant number of associated publications to justify creating a subject heading. So when we do authority work on a subject, we obviously need to prioritise. We prefer subjects with a New Zealand connection, where there's a significant body of work associated with a subject, and particularly New Zealand geographic names that may have changed. Last year, we were cataloguing a book about the sheep rustler James McKenzie and his Good Dog Friday, and we realised we had a lot of books about James McKenzie, but no heading for sheep stealing. There were authorised Elsie headings for cattle stealing, horse stealing, and even pet theft, but nothing for sheep stealing. So we put forward a proposal for sheep stealing, which was accepted, and which we are now using to describe resources about sheep rustling. Also last year, we successfully proposed a subject heading for contract tracing. Unfortunately, our proposals aren't always successful. Even when Library of Congress agrees in principle, they may require a different preferred term. Back in 2014, we proposed a subject heading for Manuka. However, the Library of Congress subject headings manual told us to prefer the Latin name unless there was an English common name. We did argue quite strongly that Manuka was the common name in New Zealand, but Library of Congress didn't accept that argument as Manuka is not an English name. And thus the approved term became Leptospermum scoparium. However, we are still able to add the familiar term Manuka as a non-preferred term. So this means a user can search under Manuka and retrieve all the relevant resources. There's also still some hope that Manuka may become a preferred term in future. Terms can change. For example, we recently submitted a successful proposal to change the politically loaded term waterfront strike in Z1951. This implies that you're on the side of the employers to a more neutral term. Waterfront Dispute, NZ, 1951. Moving on to places, we also do a lot of work updating geographic subject headings as decisions are made by the NZ Geographic Board. Recently, there have been many dual language names created. We're on a list to receive notifications of these, and when these come through, we put forward proposals to change existing subject authority records. For example, a few years ago, we successfully submitted a proposal to change the outdated heading Egmont Mount to Taranaki Mount. And the name is changing again, back to the original name, Taranaki Monia. We're looking forward to submitting another Seiko proposal to return it to its original name once the name has been officially approved by the New Zealand Geographic Board. We also have the option to add a new non-preferred term to an existing term. For example, we recently added Moana Oceania into Moana Nui as references to the subject heading for Oceania, enabling access through these perhaps more appropriate terms. If you're curious, you can see newly approved terms on the Library of Congress subject headings website. They post monthly lists. One of the new topical terms for August is a very topical subject heading, vaccine hesitancy. And I was also really happy to see the term for craftivism on the July list. As I pointed out in the previous session, Library of Congress subject headings are also available as linked data. Linked data has been a buzzword for a while, but we're still waiting to realize the full potential in library systems. The principle is that name and subject authority records will be based around identifiers rather than preferred terms. So for any subject or creator, you can have multiple preferred terms and you would be able to display whatever label you wish in any language or any script, depending on your user communities. For example, we're currently restricted to using the American term truck farming for market gardening. However, in a linked data world, 
A URI or uniform resource identifier could identify the concept and then we could choose to display alternative labels depending on the context. So that in the United States, you might see truck farming, but users in Aotearoa New Zealand would see the familiar term market gardening. Or we could choose to display the nga upukotukutukutu ahumara. And as you can see, this is the linked data version of the authority record for truck farming. It's identified by the URI rather than a string representing the preferred term. So you could add that URI to the catalogue record and then choose to display market gardening in the discovery layer. And that is all for me. Just wonder if there are any questions. I think there's some messages in the chat. Ah, yep, thanks, Kirsty. The list for how to get it on the New Zealand Geographic Board updates. Um, yeah, definitely, I can send you the contact details for that. Yeah, there's a particular contact at the New Zealand Geographic Board and you just email them and then they'll put you on the email list. And I've also got my email address up there so that if you want to contact me later, if certain questions come to mind, you just send me an email at katherine.amy at dia.gov.nz. Um, yeah, I've got a question for Megan Engel. Um, if a term or subject is not accepted, is it ever put forward again at a later time? Yes, it can be. I've actually just been thinking about Manuka again, actually, and thinking that I need to check the New Zealand Oxford English Dictionary, because if it's in there as Manuka, we've possibly got a better, better argument for Library of Congress to get that changed. So basically, if we've got a strong reason and new evidence, then yeah, we definitely can put a proposal forward again. Yeah, thank you, Kim. Yeah, that's a good question. What's the best way for persons and other organisations to put forward a suggestions for new authority records? Um, you can either email me at katherine.amy at dia.gov.nz or there's a more generic email address, which is nznb at dia.gov.nz. I'll just pop that into the chat. Yeah, and a note from Kirsty about Māori common names for flora and fauna in the Museum Natural History Collections. That's, so yeah, it sounds really interesting what you're doing there at Te Papa. Thank you, Kirsty. And a question from Nina. Do you ever consider alternative name or subject authority lists if the Library of Congress approval process is too slow or isn't effective? Yeah, that's a really, really good question. And because we are pretty committed to following international standards, we do need to follow the LC process. And it is it's also one way that we can actually get some Aotearoa New Zealand terms into an international context, which we use not just by us, but other libraries. So I think there's certainly a lot of value in persisting with it. Um, we do use, obviously, Ngaupukutukutuku, and we do use some other term lists in the rare book space. 
So yeah, it's certainly for something that we're open to, but yeah, there's a lot of things to talk about in that context. Uh, yeah, good, another great question from Garth Watkins about a process for removing names. If someone doesn't want their name in the name authority or does not want to be associated with an earlier name they're identified with. Yeah, that's a really good question. And um, we certainly re remove information from names. If people don't want that information there, we will remove dates of birth, middle names. We will change the form of name to a name that the person is comfortable with. In terms of the name not being in the th name authority file, there's an issue around sort of if someone has created a published work that has their name on it, we do tend to put that name in the file. If they don't, yeah, if they haven't had the situation where someone hasn't wanted a name at all, but the question is really being more about the nature and form of the name. And in terms of removing an earlier name, yes, definitely we would remove that. And yeah, a really good question from Madeline Turnbull about the use of macrons in Library of Congress study headings. Um, certainly when we create new subject headings, we add macrons if appropriate. If we update existing subject headings and, and are making a change to the one exec field, then we'll add macrons if appropriate and we're able to change them that way. In terms of existing Library of Congress subject headings without macrons, it's, yeah, that's a conversation that we've had in the past, which Library of Congress were very reluctant, very reluctant to allow Macrons. Um, this is a conversation we're looking at revisiting, and I think, yeah, there are some more things, points that we can bring up in support of that argument. Because, yeah, it feels really wrong that you have subject headings such as Māori, for example, in the Māori language without macrons, and it changes the entire meaning of the phrase. So, yes, yeah, certainly something that we are looking at. In terms of checking with people before they enter their name and details, the assumption that they're already public figures, um, we do only record information that's already in the public domain. So, it could be information that sort of on the back of the book or if the person has got a website associated with the book that has got a biography, we could take that information. It's, yeah, it's a tricky issue. It's something we're continuing to talk and think about because there are ethical issues around bringing together new classes of information, even though that information may already be in the public domain. Yeah, but it's yeah, certainly something we're thinking about more and more. If in doubt, we don't add the information. And Kirsty's question about Library of Congress not being interested in decolonization. Well, yeah, I mean, I think there are more conversations happening in space. There's certainly a lot of conversation around decolonizing description happening right now. I don't think Library of Congress moved particularly fast, but. I hope they will move in future. I think, you know, there is a lot of change happening and I hope that eventually they will respond to that change. Yeah, no. Another good question from Nina about working across the Pacific and with Pacific Islands to connect related terms and related language terms. We haven't at this point. It would be, yeah, it would be really good, really important to do this. Certainly something that's on the map, it's about yeah, how to make those appropriate connections and relationships. Yeah, and we're yeah, sort of about finding that space. It's certainly a really, really important issue. I guess the linked data space is exciting. It's, yeah, it's sort of also about how we have library managed systems can that are based around linked data, which things tend to move slowly, but certainly hopeful that they will move.
Yeah, and as I said, if you've got further questions, you're welcome to email me. Okay, that looks like all the questions that we've got had so far. So if you have got anything more to ask, as Catherine said, contact her directly. Um, I'd like to thank Catherine for a very interesting series of presentations. It's been very informative. It's an area we haven't really gone into recently, so it's good to have an update and new people to find out a bit more about the process. And just to remind people that next week we have got our last session with Rebecca on how and why the, the Kutu Cataloging Working Group created training videos. So I hope to see you then. Thank you, Joanne. And thanks to Leanne. And thank you for everyone for coming. Amahinu nui kia koutou.